Welcome to the Muxall Open IoT channel. I am your host, Michael Crane. And now we're uh, going to have to jump back over. Now we're going to uh, start the uh, assemble and install the carriages. Okay, here's where the fun stuff's going to come in. Let's see here. I, I Usually I read ahead, but I didn't this time. So I guess I need to go ahead and lay all this stuff out. Make sure we have it. I'll put it on the table over there, and then we can get started. So I will try to do this while holding on to the phone. This little, this little pitifully wrench they gave us is. Uh, and let me see if I can. Uh, hold on. There we go. Okay. Did I go too far? We'll see. So it, one note it did say in here that I should probably mention, it says do not turn these things uh, counterclockwise, otherwise it'll unscrew. So you want to keep turning, if you if you go too far, kind of like, I don't know if I'm too far or not, it's hard to tell looking through the phone, but if you go too far, you just keep going clockwise, right? And uh, I'll do these, um, I'm going to do the rest of these, I'll do the other one off camera. And then this one right here, I'll be back. This is the uh, Z, the Z Plus. Okay, I went ahead and finished the, the right one, or Y2, and uh, I was gonna do this one. I, I put this little bitty wrench on that thing, and I couldn't budge it. So I'm gonna have to go get a real. I have a 10 millimeter wrench. The only reason why I'm using theirs is. Because I was too lazy to walk over my toolbox and and get another one, but uh, yeah, I hope I hope I don't break them, uh, putting too much torque on them. But anyway, I'm gonna go get a real wrench and I'll be right back. Yeah, okay, I put my Craftsman on there. <laughs> it's got a it's got a little bit better throw than or uh, leverage than uh, <laughs> what they provided. Okay, so there's what I came up with, and that way if I need to. Uh, move them down to the bottom or rotate them. I just have to do a quarter turn each. Whereas if I put them on the bottom first, then I'd have to do a uh, three quarters of a turn to get it back to the right. So uh, hopefully that works out. We'll see. Okay, so the next step is um, uh, well, actually, we, we skip the next step. So prep the Z, Z carriage. Uh, we're going to go to pages six and seven. And here it is. So skip, uh, skip pages 20, prep the Z. Okay, so I guess the first step is uh, we're going to attach the X motor to the Z plus. And I was kind of pre-reading these <laughs> instructions. It's, and and uh, I might have to read them again, but they are sorely lacking in pictures on this. So they say place the Z plus face down with the six uh, standoffs pointing up. Okay, so we've got this guy. Yeah. Uh, okay. There we go. Okay, it's pointing up. Okay, and it says then set X motor on to the four evenly spaced 30 millimeter standoffs located in the center of... And sorry I keep moving the phone, there's a stupid icon right in the middle of what I'm trying to read. Anyway, it says set the, Z, the X motor on the four evenly spaced standoffs located in the center of the Z plus between the Z motor and the idler. An idler, sorry. Make sure the motor pulley is directed towards the carriage plate and the carbide 3D label points up. Okay. So here's our motor. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you can't see it, can you? Uh, carbide. Okay. Uh, okay, and so which way is up? <laughs> uh, hold on. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> I read this a few times, and and uh, I guess I guess the authors of this forget that uh, some of us aren't real familiar with their equipment, and so they said, you know, uh, make sure the uh, the pulley is is directed towards the carriage plate, and the carbide three D label faces up, and and I can only assume which direction is up. I am assuming that the motor on top here is up, because <laughs> otherwise it'd be dragging through your material. And um, and yeah, this this thing right here, um, this motor, I guess, just sits um, 
on these standoffs kind of like that. And even though it fits nicely, kind of like that, but I mean, this, you know, this belt drive is, is pretty high and I'm pretty sure it's supposed to ride on these tensioners. And uh, so I kind of guessed it, you know, that was the way it was supposed to be. Kind of makes sense if you, if you look at it, you know, like that, I guess, All right? And it lines up. And uh, and then I was flipping through the manual and on the steps I told you to <laughs> to skip. And, and here's that, the X motor. It looks like it's mounted upside down. It looks higher than the old Z motor. And uh, and if you notice, there's no label right there. So I'm the label on this guy uh, looks like it it is going to face the top. All right. So I, I think I got it oriented on there. We got the bolts right there. I did look around. It didn't say anything about using the um, the thread locker, and uh, I am very tempted to use the thread locker. They don't say to use it, so I guess I'll just put a dab of WD-40 on it and snug her down. Uh, even though my initial thought is to use the thread locker, but um, since they don't say it, maybe there's a reason they don't want you to use it. So uh, yeah, let me get that. I'll go ahead and get this guy screwed on there, and and, uh, and I, I am going to put a couple drops of WD-40 on it, make it uh, tighten better. I'll be back. Okay, I I put the uh, the bolts in, and I didn't tighten them up because I wanted to show you. I'm going to use a uh, I'm going to tighten this one a little bit, and tighten this one, and this, and kind of do a, this cross pattern. I'm going to probably do that three or four times until I get it snug down to the way I to where I want it. And I'm doing that so I don't put any weird stresses on this aluminum plate right here. This aluminum, because I have bearings in there and if you like crank down on this one and this one's loose and then tighten it, 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 it could possibly warp it. I, I don't know, being on those big, big um, standoffs, it probably, it might not. But uh, anyway, it's just good practice. One note to keep in mind, is this um this Allen wrench is humongous. I mean, you can get I can put my whole hand on it and to uh, put torque on it, and and <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that because you, you'll you'll break something on this thing. So yeah, just um yeah you know, be be you know hold it like like right here, right? Don't don't hold it down at the end and then put super torque on those bolts because I'm I'm guessing they'll they'll strip out or you'll break that aluminum frame and yeah that you wouldn't be liking liking that too much okay i've got the bolts installed you can see i got a little bit happy with, <laughs> with the thread lock compound and uh why why put a drop when you can put a whole bunch on there right and uh everything seems to be lined up okay right well yeah, looks looks okay to me and uh i went at like I said, I test fitted this, so I flipped it over from previously. So yeah, this thing is gonna is gonna bolt on, you know, like that, right? And uh, but I I think I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's go back to the instructions here. So we're gonna attach the router mount to the Z plus, um, place the Z plus face up, uh, resting on the recently installed X motor with the Z motor. Anyway, let's put it like that, right? <laughs> And uh, set the router mount upright. Yeah, we did that. Okay. And um, the trimming plate, original U to blah, 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 blah. Four holes. Yeah, yeah. They'll line everything up. Use the, uh, the little hex screws there that was for the um, tramming plate. It was in the bag with it. I, I had pulled them out. I actually found an extra one. I don't, I don't know what that little guy is. Uh, I haven't seen it in the instructions yet. Maybe it's still to, still to come. Uh, but anyway, uh, they're just little bitty uh, eight millimeter socket head cap screws. It doesn't say anything about using. It's a use four millimeter uh, hex. Oh, the, the, use a four millimeter hex key to tighten up the socket head screws until it's fully tightened. Uh, use um, to insert the two. Oh, then they just want you to put the two. These two big bolts right here go right here. This is what's going to clamp the router down. 
Okay, we'll, we'll stop there. I'll come back and we'll do the other steps here in just a minute. We'll stop at step three. Okay, so I've got all, uh, all four bolts installed. And I did use the, the cross pattern to tighten them down in several steps. I installed these guys right here. And, uh, and if you're wondering, yes, I did put uh, WD-40 on, on everything. And these guys right here, this one right here was a little bit hard. I'm telling you the WD-40 or a little bit of, um, you know, that household oil is going to make your life a lot easier because you'll know when it's going in smooth or if you're cross-threading. Uh, if you're not using any kind of oil, it's hard to tell uh, if you're cross-threading something, if it's real tight, right? Okay, I went ahead and, and did step four. It's, we just looked at that. Okay, so it wants me to place the Z-Grill on its end. Uh, it basically wants me to stand it up like this, right? And push it down. Well, I can't do it. And let me see, can I hold, hold it up and do this? Ah, oh, excellent. Okay, that's what it wanted. It just wanted me to push it all the way down. So, and we can read it real quick. It's um, uh, gently but firmly placed downward pressure onto the router mount to slowly move the carriage until it stops at the uh, very bottom of its range of motion, which is what we just did. Okay, I'll set that guy back down. So, we just moved it all the way down. The next step is prepping the X-Rail. It's been revised and you can read the warning. It's just telling you that the rails are not identical. So you have to use the right rail in the right place. And uh, you can read how they work about the extrusions. But we have to jump over here to, um, oh, there it is, prep the X-Rail. Really, there's no prep to it. It's just, they just want you to identify them, which which we did in a previous step, I, I do believe. I mean, I mean, so I, I brought them up on the table here, give you guys a big picture of it. And uh, so, yeah, this is the uh, right rail and the left rail and the back rail or the, Z, the X axis, right? So, uh, yeah, it's, it seems very redundant. And then the next two steps, just so we don't have to keep coming back to this, is um, is, the, <laughs> is to follow the steps. Uh, note that the old X-Rail has been replaced with an upgraded X-Rail. And uh, when we get to page 27, the XZ carriage assembly and has been replaced by the Z+. Right? Okay, very good. So uh, installing the Y1 carriage. I wish they would just say left. <laughs> It is the Y, I guess, but it's just Y1 means nothing. Anyway, um, uh, let's see here. Use the, uh, oh, we're going to use the boxes. Cool. We're going to use a four millimeter hex screw and the M4, M6, uh, 12 millimeters long button head cap screws to attach uh, the left carriage to the left end of the, of the X-Rail. Oh, okay. So we're going to attach this guy to the X-Rail left side. Okay, and we're going to use the boxes. Oops, sorry. We're going to use the boxes to hold it up. Yeah, okay, so we're going to attach the, the, left, the left carriage to the left side of the X-Rail. And it, uh, one thing to note, it says uh, do not fully tighten the screws. I did use uh, WD-40. On ours, I set it up on the boxes just like they had it in the picture, and um, all right, and and I like I said, I tighten mine up and then back them off uh, a quarter to a half turn, and you know make sure everything's nice and snug. And and yes, I did put a WD-40 on the the screws, made them go in nice and easy. Okay, okay. So next on the list is install the XZ carriage assembly. It just says slide the XE carriage onto the open end of the X-Rail with a carriage facing front and the stepper motor up. Okay. Line up the four V-wheels with two V-wheels shown as in figure 325. I guess they want us to look at that. They just, they just want to make sure we put the V-wheels on the... I don't know what to call that. Uh, pay special attention 
do all four V wheels, make sure they are seated properly on the, oh, the V rails, okay. Uh, once the um, Y2 cartridge goes on, the XZ cartridge is locked in place. Be careful not to let the XZ cartridge slide into the Y1 cartridge. Pro tip, using uh, easy peel masking tape, such as uh, blue painter's tape, nothing that leaves a residue behind, to prevent the Z XZ cartridge from sliding back and forth. Oh, okay. So just, I just want to tape it down. Very good. Okay, so... <laughs> You remember, we weren't, it wasn't clear how to uh, uh, open those wheels. And I'm guessing, you know, I hadn't really looked at that, but I'm guessing when you move this down, it moves the wheel down. And so when I was trying to put it on the, the V-Rail there, yeah, so this is the, the V-Rail. It was, they're, they're too close, sorry, they're too close together. Right, and it, I couldn't slide it onto the V roll, so we need to open up those wheels more. So I'm, I think if we go ahead and put this guy down, the furthest, it's going to move this wheel down, which should give us more, more room on both sides. So I'll go ahead and do that, and I'll let you know what happens. Yep, that fixed it. Slid right on there, no problems, and. Um, one thing uh, to take note of, it's, it's very, very tight fit on there, but uh, this thing is, is very front heavy. Be very careful. I, that's probably why they had us drop this thing down to kind of lower the center of gravity on this thing because, yeah, it can easily tip over. So, <laughs> but yes, yeah, I mean, as far as needing the tape, I, I don't know. I, I don't know, it, it's, it's still pretty stiff, even with those uh, uh, eccentric nuts um, all the way open. But uh, I might go ahead and put some on there just, just as a matter of cause. I think, I think that looks good. I, I went ahead and installed my masking tape. I don't have the masking tape, the easy peel. I'm not familiar with it. This is, uh, I know it's kind of hard to see. It's uh it's 3M edge lock. Oh, there we go. Safe release. So yeah, it should be okay. Okay, so what's next on the list here? Uh, install the Y2 carriage. Look at the picture here, yep. And um, we know it's revised, we already looked at it. It just says replace, you know, I forget what it says, 28. Oh, no, it has nothing to do with the Y2. That's right, this is the right side. Okay, so we're going to um, just use the same four uh, M6 by 12 millimeter screws. Put it on there. When properly attached, motor will be facing by the, yeah, so it's just going to be just like the left side. And we're not going to fully tighten. Yep, we've located the uh, right side carriage. And we're going to stick, stick it on the right side of the x-axis. Okay, well, I got it on there. This one was by far uh, the, the, not the prettiest. Uh, I had to go ahead and add more uh, masking tape to hold this thing down. Because remember I was showing you how it was top heavy. And, and with me kind of messing around this with this end plate, the right-hand end plate right here, it was... Uh, it fell over on me once, and uh, so that I kind of strapped it down with some tape. But, but yeah, this this guy this this had a little bit besides the uh, the shards in there had a little bit of an alignment problem. I'm I'm not sure why. It's uh, I mean it's extruded aluminum. I thought originally it was just having problems getting threaded in, but yeah, that didn't that didn't go on too pretty. And uh, even though they're not tight uh it's 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 almost like binding so yeah I, I can't do it and hold the phone but anyway this the these screws aren't tight but you wouldn't be able to tell uh because you can't really jock move the plate around any but uh okay well i just thought i'd let you know 
And like I said, I'm going to clean up the other threads on these these others before I I go any further. So okay, I just thought I'd give you an update. I'm going to see if I can show you. Yeah, so you see that that shard right there? Yeah, that's that's what I've been pulling out. This is what I'm getting out of them. These little pieces. Let's see, there's another one there. Let's see if I can focus. Yeah, see it? And it, it, it was weird as there, it's like right at the edge. I don't know if there's, I don't, I can't really see it. Anyway, I, I, I saw this one in the light. I thought I'd show it to you. But yeah, that's, um, that's a real problem. That's what, that's going to cause all kinds of cross threading problems because that little, that little shard will just, you know, make the screw divert in different angles and and then it just goes in sideways and another thing they didn't do and i think i read that they actually manufacture these things themselves right this isn't you know something that they bought from china and it was just bad manufacturing i mean it could be i don't i don't remember to be honest with you but they didn't taper these holes any which yeah see see that little shard right there See that that makes starting a screw, I mean, you you can't hardly start a screw with that. And what's weird is is I uh let me see if I can show you this. What's weird is they, they tapered these holes. But you know, but they didn't do the ends and and I, they're gonna have you know lots of people complaining about this. I mean, I thought about just going and getting, you can't really use a um, a regular, um, oh, I forget what it's called, uh, to ream out the hole because of the gap in it. You have to use like a stone, you know, like on a Dremel tool type thing with a like a grinder and just kind of just hit it a little bit. But yeah, that would take, that, it's it's like it's missing a step. They, they missed a step. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's that, that's bad. It and it's causing problems. I, I had problems with that big time, and and, uh, and I'm cleaning the other ones out now. But yeah, that, that's uh, that's what I'm dealing with here. And so be careful with these things. Make sure to clean them all up before you try assembling them, because that's kind of that that aluminum and these these end plates are kind of heavy. And if you're doing it by yourself, trying to balance everything, you're gonna you know, it's just everything is just going to turn out bad. This is where you need help, you know, someone to to help hold the plate while you're trying to get the screws aligned. Because especially without that taper, um, I mean, you have to get the screws started perfect. But you can see this this one piece is a, is a good example. So out of four holes, three of them have shards. And this one right here, I... I mean, I don't know if you can get a screw in there without, you know, cleaning it up with, with, uh, you know, this guy first. This thing basically has got um, like little cutters in it that will clean out all that junk. And that's what I've been pulling, using them to pull out all that stuff. Okay, so first things first is round up all the uh, required components and tools. Um, it's revised on page four, and um, there's page four. It doesn't really say, it just says, you know, <laughs> this list has changed. And see figure A1. Okay, there's the new the new picture. Here's the old picture. It's, oops, sorry, there's a glare there. Here's the old picture. And, uh, and so I kind of went through this list. Uh, we can go through it real quick. Let's see, we've got the, uh, the x-axis sitting on top of the boxes and the sitting on top empty boxes. And then we've got the, uh, the Y carriage uh, left and the Y carriage right. And the, um, let's see, where are we at on this list here? Uh, K, the Z plus and uh, that stepper motor what is that? That's uh, G. Sorry. <laughs> G, that's the X axis stepper motor. And uh, <clears throat> one of the things I noticed is 
fairly annoying. So, so this case, all all these parts right here came out of the same box, uh, which was uh, marked E, and inside it it had bags labeled A, B, or things labeled A, B, and C, and on here they've all been relettered. And so, um, so now H, which is the bolts for the X-axis stepper motor, I'm sorry, yeah, H right here, are these bolts, which were B in the box. At least I think they are, I hope they are. And, um, and then M on here is actually C that came out of the box. Let me see if I can, sorry, there's a glare going on. Yeah, so that's, which is now M, you know, the tramming plate, and then now it's using, it's relettered all the, you know, Loctite and all that, all that other stuff. Anyway, I, I think we can figure it out. Um, so there's the Loctite. There's these, what is N and O there? N and O is, oh yeah, the mounter adapting ring and the router mount. They're over here. They're, they're on our cart that we pulled out of that final assembly box yesterday. So I, I think we're okay. Um, so uh, yeah, I think I, I think I found everything and got everything set out. So we should be able to get started. We're going to go ahead and uh, lay out the carriage assembly components. And uh, these guys, and they're wearing me out with their label changes. So I was looking at the picture and it's saying uh, Y1 carriage, Y2 carriage. I'm like, I'm like what is that? And you read over here, so the Y1 carriage is the left. Why didn't they just put left? I mean, in the <laughs> they they keep changing the name, the letters of these things. It's it's and and yes, yeah, they don't even reference it left, right? Anyway, and uh, I noticed it wasn't fixed in their new document either, right? It just uh, D and R. That makes no sense. Anyway, enough fussing about that. It's revised on page six. <clears throat> I'm on page six right here. You go up and uh, and look at what we're looking at here, and it says, follow all steps replacing X and Z carriages with Z+. Plus. <laughs> so all the X and Z carriages are, the, are actually on the Z+. Plus. So, okay. And then on the next page is open the V-wheels, and of course, the only step is as is open to uh, V wheels on the Z plus using 10 millimeter wrench. Okay, and I went ahead and laid them out here. We've got the uh, the left Y the left Y axis part D Y one, the Z one, which is uh, or the Z plus that has the X built in, and and R Y axis right or Y two, whichever you prefer, whichever letter you prefer to use. Okay, so as long as no one's confused on that, and um, yeah, this is nice. They kind of tell you what the eccentric nuts are for. I uh, read it. I won't read it for, to you. You can go ahead and read it yourself. But yeah, it looks like it's just to. Uh, I guess it just wobbles these or moves these. Uh, they call them V V wheels or something. Okay, and they they basically just want to open these uh, V wheels up. I know it's a little confusing, but uh, and and then they've got these arrows here. Yeah, I don't really understand that. But they they do have this graphic here, and this this was helpful. I was able. Okay, so you know when this nut or when the screw is at the at the top, that's closed. And when it's at the bottom, so it's it's pushing the wheel. Which way is it pushing the wheel? It's pushing the wheel down, it looks like. All right? It's pushing the wheel down when it uh, is open. And it's pushing it up when it's closed. Okay, and we don't really care about the Z carriage. And that, that's for the, uh, <laughs> the Y1, Y2, and X carriages. And uh, so I went ahead and laid ours out. And as you can see, we do need to adjust them a little bit. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put 
my wrench on here and turn it clockwise until a bolt uh, that's coming through the end here is at the very bottom. The thinnest part's at the very bottom, right? So, um, and that's kind of like what their picture is. Oh, actually, they have a different picture for their... Okay, so this guy is the X and Z, right? And it told us to use... And the instruction right here says, follow steps replacing X and Z cartridges with Z+. Plus. Great. Uh, the problem is, this is this guy has X and Z. And so which one do we... So here's X, and this is open. Here's Z, and open is to the, is to the right. Where open here is at the bottom. I'm talking about the bolt going through it, right? So is it to the right, or is it to the bottom? Um, don't know. It, I don't know. So, uh, uh, I'm going to guess... <laughs> I don't know what it is. Um, I'm just, I'm going to start from the, the bottom. All right, I take that back. I'm going to do this. I'm going to roll it to the right. All right. If I roll it to the right, then if I need, that'll be kind of in the middle. It's not of these guys. So it's not at the very top. It's not at the very bottom. Maybe that'll work. I, I don't know. Yeah, they need to clarify their um, instructions on that. Okay, so for this next step, we're going to attach the router mount to the tramming plate. <laughs> and, and this picture right here, I, I guess it's useful. It shows you how to orient the, uh, the tramming plate on, on the um, Z+. Plus. I don't know what to call it, onto the Z+, plus on this thing. But, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they really need to put more pictures in, in this. Uh, the verbiage is okay, but I'll, I'll go ahead, we'll go ahead and go through this real quick. And I have to admit, I did a dry run before I videoed this just to make sure I understood what the what it said. So it says uh, Z Plus Kit includes a tramming plate, uh, which uh, mounts the, which screws the router mount uh, using Loctite thread and then is mounted four points on Using Loctite thread locker, which I don't know why they'd put that in there. Anyway, then is mounted at four points to the front of the Z+. Plus. When the tramming plane is oriented properly, it resembles the letter U. That's the only thing that picture shows is how to uh, orient that tramming plate. Okay, so now it says align the router mount to the tramming plane. And, and here you see no mounts or there's no pictures. Where's the pictures? So anyway... Um, and so, you know, this is the router mount, if you remember. And, and I believe F right here are the mount. Well, I know F right here. Uh, F is the routing mount screws. So we'll just take both these devices over here. Or these, these objects. Okay, and um, looking at our directions, it says uh, align the router mount to the tramming plate. Uh, they are properly aligned with the, the logo. The carbon 3D is facing up along with the two legs of the tramming plate. So they basically want it like that, right? So the two legs are pointing up. The, the logo is pointing up. And we can just flip everything over here. Let's see here. Oops. And uh, and it goes like that, right? All right. And let's see here. Um, let's see. Add Loctite uh, thread logger to the routing mount and the two M5 by 16 button head cap screws. One drop for each. That's all that's needed. And that's these. These two screws in here, right? Not the not the big ones, the short ones. And I'll do that here in a second. And it said, uh, and then use the three millimeter uh, hex key uh, to tighten everything up to the tramming plate, fully tighten. And be careful when you're tightening. See this? Here's the. Uh, this is another warning. Here's here's the three millimeter uh, Allen wrench or hex key. And uh, it's got a big handle on it, so yeah, 
That's probably what the thread locker is for, so you don't crank down on it and it stays tight. Because if you crank down on it and strip this thing, you're going to be hating life. So uh, I, I, I can't do this and hold the phone, so I'm going to go ahead and, and put the thread locker on the hole and on the bolts and screw them down, and I'll be back. Well, when I was putting the right plate on, I'm sorry, the right right carriage. Yeah, these the threads on this these things, I don't know if you can see, they're, they had a lot of... Uh, I don't know what to call them, uh, uh, leftovers. <laughs> so I'm, I'm using that kit. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and just clean up all the threads on this because this one, this guy right here was, was really bad. I mean, it, I didn't cross it. It just, you know, it's like when you tighten it up and it stopped and, and, uh, and then I noticed there was, uh, you know, shards and, of uh, aluminum laying around so you can kind of see it a little bit i, I kind of cleaned it out a bit and uh but i thought i'd show you that just just uh i probably should have done the other side the other side wasn't wasn't too bad it, 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 you could tell it's it's like when you tap something and there's leftover pieces in there uh, shavings that's what I, that's the word i was looking for there's like little leftover shavings i probably need to be cleaned out but anyway i'm gonna clean them all out and I'm probably going to do all of them uh, just just so I don't run, keep running into this problem. So um, anyway, just thought I'd let you know. Don't forget, you can support the Muxall Open IoT channel by donation using a credit card and PayPal or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well... That's it for this video. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up, that helps, and hit the subscribe button, that really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.